time to tell a story. My buddy Curtis Bisbee from Old Carthage lost his grandfather at school. Curtis has three small children. The youngest being the rock, who is the little redhead, boys and girls. Well, as a family, every night they gather for prayer. And they've been praying for Grandpa Bisbee because he's been bad for a while. Well, Friday was the funeral. And they gathered for prayer Friday night and brought prayer and said, And I want to pray for Grandpa Bisbee. Of course, older brother Eli says, Brock, he died. Don't you remember? We went to his funeral today. And Brock says, I remember. They put him in a treasure box. And out of the mouths of babes. And the children leave. Because, you know, we're just here for a while. Our true treasure is here before us today. That is the box we go into. The box of life. The box that we live in. Eternal. Father God, we thank you so much for this treasure that you have given us. These simple, simple, simple symbols that we do in order to remember the gift and the giving that you gave to us. Lord, I know there's days we go through our lives and we're beating ourselves up, but we do not have to. You took that beating for us. You went before us in order that we may live. We can never repay you. We can never do enough. Your grace knows no bounds. And Father, I thank you so much for that sacrifice. As we celebrate your birth, that was only for one reason. That was to lay down your life. We thank you. We praise you. We adore you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Probably one of the greatest privileges that I have is when we, as a group, as a family, we unite in remembering the sacrifice that our Lord has made. And I think of all the things that are around us this morning about the Christmas trees and why do we have the Christmas trees? Why do we have the nativity sets? For one reason, to help us remember. And then we find this. He said, take, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and he said, this blood is shed for you for the remission of sin. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. I realize that I do quite a few things a little bit different than anyone else, but uh, you'll, you'll get used to that when, I, when I've been your minister for 25 years, then you will remember that uh, I did something different. And I would, thank you. Uh, before we have the time of prayer this morning, I'd like for us to sing one more song. And it's, it's a Christmas song. It's it's hymn number 125. All I want to do is just sing one verse of this, but I've been thinking of this all week long. Joy to the world and what we think of it. And now I'm going to be mean to you. I'm going to ask that we stand as we sing this. Could we do this? Okay, now they don't have the, the music back there for us, so we're going to have to sing it a cappella, and you do very well with that anyway. Just verse 1. Joy to the world, the Lord is come.
think he wants to sing another one. Okay, so we'll, we'll do that. Let's sing the last verse. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nation prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. Thank you. I always appreciate the the opportunity when it comes time for us to to have our, our prayer time and I'm grateful for for those of you that you know fill out a little card or, or a little item here uh, several that have been given this morning is Linda Worthington she has COVID and is having difficulty and so we'd ask that you keep uh, keep Linda in our prayers and also Carol White had a minute stroke now I do not know Carol uh, is she related or a friend? She's a good friend of ours. Okay, so let's please keep Carol uh, in our prayers as well. And then also prayers for uh, Elaine Root. Uh, she has five siblings uh, back again, and hopefully for as it says, three, 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 three. Okay. Sorry. That see, I can't I can't read English. Uh, has three siblings back again, and hopefully a blessing for her. And yesterday would be uh, her dad's 51st anniversary. And then also uh, a, a phrase, and I really appreciate this one, uh, Rick. Uh, it says, COVID cases at Samaritan have been recovered. What, what a blessing there, you know, when you think of the of the housing and everything that there is there. And it, but he says, and this I, I really appreciate it, when we think of Christmas time, could still use some winter clothes, coats for men and women, and a two-year-old boy. So if anybody has anything that you can help see Rick or Caitlin uh, about this, this is the Samaritan Village in, uh, in Macomb. And their uh, prayers also for, for Bryce, uh, has, has liver uh, enzymes are still elevated, and if this continues, he'll he'll need further testing, possibly a biopsy. And this is from from uh, Corey. And then travel mercies. Now it's always nice when we have family come and, and visit us, but it's always kind of hard when when they go home, isn't it? And so uh, travel mercies for Remington. He's heading back to Carolina uh, in the morning. So let's keep all of these individuals in our prayers this morning. Are there any other prayer requests that you have? No, but I have a prayer. Yes. My sister that was in the hospital for COVID, uh -huh. she is on a Peoria now, but she is doing better. Okay. She's getting stronger. They can have the process of dropping. And she's doing good. Okay, what's her name? Leota Glover. Leota. Let's keep Leota in our prayers as well. We're glad Pat is back with us this morning, too. He, and, uh, and of course, uh, Judy, we're glad to have her back, too. <laughs> since since the two of them, you can't separate them. <laughs> she was his right. And yeah. where's David this morning? Oh, he's, he's, he's much better. He just, with the sinus thing, he was a little concerned about sitting here and going in for sneezing or coughing things, so he decided to get over him or something. But our, our daughter-in-law, Jessica, is scheduled on Tuesday at noon to have her C-section and get our grandbaby. And she's very, very scared because the COVID at Memorial in Park Beach is very high right now. Sure. She's yeah. worried that they they may take the baby away from, you know, not mercy the baby. They're, she's afraid John won't get to be there. She's just very upset. Five months. Very upset. You don't have any other grandchildren, do you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I will grandchildren. have to say yesterday was a very special day because uh, Lindsay and the, and the kids were here and helped with the with the decoration and it was just I tell you it was a time of sheer joy for us to have all those all those kids running around here again. They say they're really coming great. for Christmas Eve service. Pardon? Yes. They say they're coming for Christmas Eve service. Great, great. So let's bow our heads now for a moment of prayer. Our Father, we thank you this morning for 
your presence in our lives for the times that you have led us and we we really have maybe gone astray we thank you for the comfort that you give us for the assurance and guidance I thank you father for such a beautiful day that we have and the men and women that, and children that are here this morning for this time of worship and adoration I pray that it will also be a time when we when we find ourselves deeper in our relationship to you that we will understand the scriptures better that we will find peace for ourselves and that we will not be afraid in our world I thank you father for all of the work that so many men and women are doing on behalf of, of your church not just in this place but all over the world and especially in areas like like we are where the COVID has been something that has pulled us down I pray that you will help us to not be afraid but accept your presence and that we will never stray may we come back to this more faithful and stronger than we have ever been before I thank you father for the opportunity to sing to rejoice we thank you father for the prayers that you have answered when our families have been separated when we long so much to be with our children our families our moms and dads and what it means I pray that you will bless the efforts that are made as we prepare meals for men and women this next week I, I just pray that that out of this will become the deepest love and concern in meeting the needs of those around us I pray father that you continue to bless the Samaritan Center and the work that they're doing may it be something that we as as your children will be involved in in a better and stronger way and now, Father, for those that are not able to be here this morning, I pray for your presence with them. I ask that you will be with us as we look into your word. We ask and pray this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 You know, and so, uh, let's see. I, I think I've washed everything here. <laughs> I'm so grateful when I when I think of Christmas. I I love Christmas a, a great deal. It's one of the things that as as a as a child and as a young man that I, I just was always so happy about. But I, I noticed something uh, a couple of days ago. I I'm not one that really uh, watches a lot of television, but I I've been reaching and listening to one particular station. Uh, recently and it was kind of a an interesting thing that that took place that uh, they were doing something in a religious or in a Christian realm which is quite unusual but the individual that was uh, among people on the streets that were doing shopping he simply asked the question what is Christmas to you and all of them they, they talked about Christmas trees they talked about a star and they talked about camels and they talked about good Christmas meals and they talked about the family getting together and out of 30 people not one of them mentioned a relationship in Christmas and Jesus Christ and you think how sad this is that all of the things that we have talked about, we think about Santa Claus, we think about all of these other things, but where, where is this within our lives? What is it that it, that it means? And it becomes really a, a deep question, I think, for all of us. And as you, you see, the, the title of the message is maybe just a little bit uh, different this morning, and, and, and also uh, something that we kind of have to to grab a hold of to, to understand but it's this you know Christ's coming is announced and when you stop and think about it if you if you go back into the reading of the Old Testament and I love to do this but how many times in the prophecies that we have we look back even at Genesis 
and we look at Exodus, we look at Isaiah, we look at the book of Micah, we look at other Old Testament books, including the book of Psalms. And what do we find in almost every one of these books? We find one issue in there over and over again, and that is about the coming of the Messiah and what this means. And we, we look at this, and, and in a sense, I, you know, I looked at all of the calendars that I have. I don't have a lot of them, but I have a number of calendars that, that are in books, and I have some that are on the walls. And you know something? Every one of these calendars said December 25, guess what? Christmas Day. And I think about everything, and I, you know, as all of you have, you, you've been in the grocery store, what do you find all of a sudden? You find candy canes. You find Christmas candy. You find all of these things, and you go into Target, or you go into Walmart, or or even Dollar General, and what do you find? You find all of these things revolved around one day, which is what? Christmas. And you look at these, and we, you think, what does this mean? What is it that, that we're thinking about? What is it that we're involved in? <laughs> And there are so many things. Certainly we think about giving gifts. We think about being with family. We think about even as we are doing next, you know, next Saturday, we're preparing turkey and we're preparing a Christmas meal for people because we care about them, because we want to do that. And so that becomes a very important issue for all of us. But then there's another passage of Scripture that all of a sudden kind of brings things together. And I realize that what I'm going to talk about <coughs> briefly this morning uh, is, is something we don't normally think of when it comes to Christmas. And that's the very simple message of love. We can read uh, John 3.16. And we find what that says, For God so loved the world, what? That he gave his only begotten Son. Isn't it interesting? In that term is what? an announcement regarding the coming of Christ. In other words, Christmas Day. And when I think of all of these things, when I think about the word love, how, I'm going to ask you, how many, you don't have to raise your hand, how, how many of you told somebody this morning that you love them? Or you, you thought about it with another person, I, I love them so much. I, I am interested in the word love because it has become such a common word that I'm, I'm not sure it has the meaning that we want in the word love. How many of you ever watch this program that's on, on uh, renovating houses? I, I kind of like that because I, I, I'd like to be able to do that. I, thankfully, the house doesn't need all the renovation that they're talking about. But you know, one of the fantastic things that you hear, somebody opens the door and they, oh, oh I love it. And then they go to another room, I love it. And then they go to the bathroom upstairs, I love it. And then they go to the backyard, honey, I love it. And over and over again, and we do the same thing with so many things. You know, when Mitzi has a, when she's a great cook, but sometimes I'll just say, honey, what do you think? I love it. Now, we say all these words, and then once in a while on the telephone, when our kids uh, have called us, uh, you know, after we've prompted them half a dozen times, they finally call. <laughs> And you have a little bit of an argument over the phone, and then you hang up and say, just remember, I love you. <laughs> and you want to say, I'm so cotton picking mad at you, I don't know whether I love you anymore. <laughs> but then we, how many times have you done that? that? That same word over and over again. And we think about what this involves and what it means within our lives as Christians. And the comments and the statements that God has made about his love for us. And this morning, that's the very issue that, that I really want us to, to look at. And in a few moments, I'm going to read from the book of 1 John, chapter 4. And there's, there's a lot there that I want you to listen to. You'll probably be astounded when you read this chapter in the book of 1 John of how many times 
the word love is mentioned. Over and over again, we find it. And how many times do we read within the scriptures and within the songs that we sing? Love came down <laughs> on Christmas Day. And we think all of a sudden, and isn't this really true? That it seems like our attention is really turned to love. And there, in reality, there's a connection between so many things. If we could almost go from left to right, what happens on the left-hand side as we look at the Old Testament? We read in the book of Genesis all about God's plan, the creation that he has made, the bringing about of, of men and women. And then all of a sudden we find something that wasn't so good. And that's when those individuals rebelled against God. They did something that he didn't want them to do. And so sin enters the world. And then we move along in the Old Testament and we find all of these prophecies about the coming of the Messiah. Now the thing that I want you to see in all of this, it isn't that, the, that these are separate, individual, non-connected events, but all of them are drawn together. You think about the creation, you think about sin, you think about the prophecies, you think about the way that God has dealt with things. And then you think about as we open up the New Testament, especially in, in Mark and Luke, and, and when we find these, these messages about the coming of Christ, the prophecy, the fulfillment of that prophecy, and then Christ coming, and then that ministry. And how does it end? It ends with the promise of eternal life. Why? Because of the love that God has for us. So many times, I think we face so much on this matter of God loving us that we forget the challenge of us loving God, of us really showing our appreciation to Him for where we are and what we're doing and so on. When we, you know, when we think about this love coming down at Christmas, God, God meets man's he meets our, our greatest needs. And the reason I, I, I've selected this message this morning is because of the situation in which we find ourselves. Mitzi will attest to this. I hate watching television. Now, I know I said I watched it, but I, I don't like it. Why? Because there is so much hate. There is so much criticism. So much that goes on that does not uh, in any way reflect love or what we are to be as Christians. And I've even been reading a number of Christian magazines and some of the things, and this matter of love for some reason has been set aside when it comes to this COVID pandemic that we know and the insistence that many people have. Now, I'm not going, I'm not political here. I'm, I'm only stressing something that I think is so important. And something that you have watched, something that you have become acquainted with, and that is the difficulty that men and women and children are having in what? Being alone. Have you ever been alone for a long period of time? Like two hours? No. <laughs> have you ever been alone for, for an extended period of time? when you didn't know anyone, you didn't have anyone that you could talk to or relate to at all. And what happened to you inside? And each of us, as we look at this, this matter of love, when we think about the coming of Christ, everything that we have here is that he is coming and for one reason, and that is to be with us. And the challenges that we are facing now in our world is Say, stay home. Don't talk to anybody. How do, you, how do you celebrate eating turkey virtually? How do you celebrate tasting cranberry sauce virtually? How do you enjoy my favorite mashed potatoes and gravy? How do you enjoy it if you don't have somebody to enjoy it with? 
if you're not together and what it means and all i'm not i'm not getting as i say i'm not getting into a political thing all i'm saying is that god understood this when he says we are to love one another when we begin to understand and see the dimension and the depth of his love uh, for us and it, it means to begin with that that he loved us think about that he loved us so much and it begins with all of that and we understand that isn't this a basic need that we have i was reading something recently about uh, an individual that said around the turn of the century there were there was one particular uh, disease that was going around that was affecting newborn babies especially now I'm not exactly sure how they pronounced it but it was something like samosas and it was it was with a small letter and they went on and, and talked about this and they said this disease was prevalent in homes where there was more wealth and it was less prevalent in homes where there was poverty where there were needs and so on and i thought to myself how could that possibly be and it was a very simple thing that he was making he said the deaths that took place during this disease were deaths of children that were not loved they were not held they were not cared for it's talking about a physical death i think the thing that we're experiencing is not a physical death but an emotional spiritual death that is happening in some way as christians it becomes our responsibility and our opportunity to see that no one dies as a spiritual death no one dies because of the need to be with one another i think we've forgotten for some reason and it, the, the attempts that are being made now of separating everybody from everyone and making us be alone now i don't know about you maybe maybe it's just me but i i i can't be alone i i i, I cannot function alone as one person i know that god is there i know the promise that he has made to me but i know also that he has given me a spouse he has given me children he has given me you folks and i i, I really pray that if there's one thing that you understand he has given you me he's given you one another and that's where we will find our strength and that's where we begin to find life and that's where we begin to find what god is talking about here when it comes to to love and our relationship to him when love came down at christmas time god became involved in all of the problems that were created okay were created out of the lack of love because of sin and so on he came down and you know what god said if we look if we were to to read or to even sing the song jesus loves me stop and think that song jesus loves me this i know that's just and we would stop it there it doesn't say if you are obedient if you do this if you read the bible if you don't kill if you don't steal he didn't say that at all what does he say i love you regardless of who we are what we have done where we have been he says i love you and he gives us an opportunity to step back and those events that have taken place in our lives that may make it difficult for us to love him or to accept his love he's given us an opportunity to reconnect with those maybe you haven't been like i have in my life and i i i'm, I'm glad we only got one young man here this morning because he uh they might want to follow my example and i at least in some parts of my life i don't want anybody following my example 
But I think about the way that I lived as a young man. Some of the things I did, some of the things I thought, some of the things I wanted to do. And I look at these and I know that when I thought them, what happened? Yes, God and I were separated, but because I separated myself from him. He didn't separate himself. In fact, we look at these passages of scripture and what he's saying, I love you so much that no matter what, I'm going to love you. I'm going to continue to care for you. And when we think about this, how, how important it is, because you know, we must we become aware of, of the gospel and, and what Christmas really means and, and what love really stands for within our lives. And that, that's all I want you to, to think about this morning. Because Christmas is, I, I know that the Christmas tree is important. I know that the things that we have to remember that are, but remember that Christmas is what? a way in which God is saying, I am going to demonstrate my love to you. And I'm going to give you my son to do that and to make it possible. Have you ever, any of you ever thought in regard to your own children and such as to how you feel? And I, I know that Mitz and I have talked about this and, and my, my daughters and, 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 and son have, have talked about this a, a number of times. And it's kind of a, a, a simple thing, you know. And I would do this with tears of saying, if I have to, I will die for you. If you can be kept safe, if, if you can be in a spot where you do not hurt, I will hurt for you. I will do whatever I can. And this is, isn't this exactly what God is saying to us? He said, I am going to pay the price for you. Have you ever had anyone that paid a price for you? Maybe in a debt or something? I remember a number of years ago, I happened to be a preacher in a little town of Whitewater, Indiana. And I'll be honest with you, as a preacher, I got myself in some trouble. Not, not trouble that I should be fired or anything like that, but it was some emotional stuff that was going on. I wasn't involved with another woman, so don't get, don't get that. But some things that happened financially. And I was being threatened. And a friend of mine who happened to be an attorney in Columbus, Indiana, a hundred miles away in my home church, his name was Edwin Crouch. And Edwin heard about it. He heard about what was happening to me. And one day I got a note that is all the only note I've ever gotten from Edwin Crouch. And it simply said this, don't worry, I've paid your debt. And you think about that. We would do the same thing with our children. We will do the same thing with one another. And this is what Christ has said to us. Isn't this what God says? I love you so much that I will pay for what you have done. And I want to read, as I said, from, from this passage of Scripture in, in the book of 1 John, chapter 4. And I, it'll be quite a few verses. So just, just kind of close your eyes and listen or else find it in, in your own Bible and, and follow along. But here's what he says. Dear friends, and a then wonderful way to open it up. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love, not that he, we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And then verse 11, and it's interesting, I, for some reason I have a, I have a circle around the, the 11 on this verse, and when I read it uh, again last night, I looked at this, I would just go this, oh, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. That's the challenge, isn't it? No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. 
We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father was, has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And God, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us. And so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Think of that challenge. Think of everything that is said there. The best to me is the assurance. Sometimes I will ask a person, or I used to, don't anymore, yeah. do you love me? Do you love me? But look at this. And God says, I love you. And it is what love is. It's not some word that talks about furniture or anything else. It is no matter where you are, no matter what you are doing, I love you. But he says, I want you to obey the direction that I have given you. And the direction that we find that is so important within our lives is the acceptance of Christ as our Savior. The acceptance of the fact that he has given us life. The fact that he has paid the debt for us. That's what Christmas is, you see. It began with the, with the prophecies, and then the fulfillment and the birth, and then what? It wasn't so that we could just enjoy Christmas. It was in order that we would be forgiven, that we would be redeemed, and that we would be with him. That's the challenge, and that's the promise that he makes. Our invitation to him is one that I know all of you have heard and sung before. It's number 371. And I, I love this when it's talking about us and it's talking about where we are as, as individuals. And we'll simply say, have thine own way, Lord. We're going to ask that we stand and we'll sing the first and the last stanzas. Maybe you need to make a decision personally for Christ. If you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, then the invitation is to you. Maybe you need to to redeem yourself or recommit yourself to him, then you can do that. Have I no way, Lord? Have I no way? I am the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. Christmas does to us and to our world that so many things seem to change the attitudes the commitment the giving of gifts I pray father that this may become a very a very definite part of our lives Let's say first of all to you father I love you 
May the same love be given to our brothers and sisters, to those around us. Guide us in that, Father. May we be that, that emblem and that, that message to our world, to our families, to our community. Bless us now as we go to our homes. Bless us as we share a few moments in the congregational meeting. We ask that you will lead us in selecting leaders and in doing what you want in order that we know what is possible. As you told Mary through one of the angels, the fact that you can do all things, that nothing is impossible with you. And we know this is true as we present the message of Christ within our community. We will grow. We will bring people to Christ. We will change. Please lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Is our